What is going on gamers? The Red Dragon here and we are taking a look at the latest Battlefield 3 patch notes. So this is a pretty in-depth video. I'm going to cover all the major changes that have come to Battlefield 3. Uh, it hit PS3 today. It's going to hit Xbox and PC. Don't know when, but it's coming, I assure you. Um, we're also going to talk about Rena servers. Uh, let's go ahead and start there because I know a lot of people probably tuned into this video to see that. Uh, server rental prices. One day, these are American dollars. One day, $1.49. Seven days, $7.00 a day. 30 days, $25.00. And 90 days, $65.00. Why do they do the $0.99? Cent? Why does everything have to be $0.99? Cents? Just I, li I like even stuff. So, um, a, a lot of people, I, you know, I've never rented a server on the PC. Uh, but from what I've heard... Uh, these are comparable prices to the PC. In fact, maybe a little bit better. So, uh, you know, depending on how you want to set that up. Also, Wake Island now has five flag conquest available uh, whenever you get one of these servers. You can set it up like that and have that running. Um, so what I'm going to do is this, this patch that they've released the patch notes on it's massive there's a lot to it so what I have done is a lot of players aren't going to go through here and read everything so I have went through here and read it for you I've highlighted the things that I think are important at least to me as a player uh, also you know there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm not going to cover but uh, you can read it as I run through here all the stuff highlighted are the the subjects that I'm going to cover real quick that I'm going to run through um, but the rest of the stuff is really in-depth and things that really only veterans are going to be uh, in inclined to know. And they're the ones that are going to be reading this to figure out what all is going on. So we'll get started with the Red Dragon's top fixes. Players should no longer take fall damage from short falls. Thank goodness. Players now get up from prone slightly faster. So it's going to make for a little faster gameplay. And fix some situations where players could not be revived. Uh, increase the spawn protection time from one second to two second, but if you move, that is going to be uh, eliminated. Uh, spawn protection um, no longer canceled by the player just simply looking around. Um, increase the speed at which a player regains accuracy when aiming after moving. Um, so again, increasing the speed of the gameplay a little bit, which I like. Uh, increase the inaccuracy and recoil added when a player is fully suppressed. So suppression is going to play a bigger role, have a bigger impact on the game. Parachutes now respond uh, faster. Uh, tweaked bipods. We'll talk about bipods here after a while. And fix several issues when trying to vault over objects. So a lot of times it won't let you vault. That apparently has been fixed. The knife, something I didn't uh, mention, but it does now only take two swipes to kill a person whenever you are in front of them. Unguided tank rounds, RPGs now destroy jets and helicopters. Uh, increase the damage from the tank's primary weapon to the front of and to the side of another main battle tank. Uh, so they're talking like one good hit to the side could result in a disable. Slightly reduce the repair speed of the repair tool. And, uh, you know, that problem whenever you're trying to lock on to targets, sometimes it jumps between target to target. That's going to be corrected. Increase the damage of the Javelin and air-to-ground missiles against laser-designated targets. Uh, javelin missiles fired without laser-guided uh, now do more damage to the side and the rear of tanks. Slightly reduce the locking time of all weapons versus laser-designated targets. And laser-guided guided missiles can now be distracted by flares. So a lot of changes there. Uh, looks like they've pumped up the Javelin, so more people may start using it. Also, with all this change of uh, laser-guided targeting systems and all this other stuff, probably the SoFlam is going to be more, uh, I guess, used or, or has more benefits to uh, pulling that out. So uh, we'll see how that changes the gameplay over time. Flares no longer break the lock-on of a vehicle that is locked on. It will only distract the flares. So if you have a, a target locked on, you, you fire off, they fire off their flare, no longer do you lose that target. It's So uh, people in the jets and helicopters, you're really going to have to pay attention to those sounds of the game. Know when a missile is incoming and not just fire off uh, the flares just whenever you get locked on because it's not going to work anymore. Um, Flares now more reliably 
uh, distract missiles, especially for helicopters. Flares now reload at 11 seconds, except for the gunner in the helicopter, which remains unchanged at 20 seconds. AA missiles are more difficult to dodge in jets, so a lot of people have created videos and tutorials showing you how to dodge uh, missiles. In fact, I've got one on my channel that, that uh, we featured, uh, but going to happen a lot less now. Apparently, a lot of skilled players were doing this. It was kind of unbalanced uh, according to DICE, and so they have made it more difficult to dodge missiles. AA missiles should no longer kill the pilot instead of the vehicle, and AA missiles should no longer detonate before hitting their targets. Uh, reduced the damage of the AA, AA missiles against jets to 45%. And also the IGLA and Stinger now lock on more quickly and disable an, an aircraft with one hit. But the uh, flip side of that is uh, they have significantly reduced range. Now I already thought that the range on the Stingers and missiles were already pretty low, but now they've they've tried to counterbalance that by saying, okay, you're going to lock onto them a lot sooner, and if you do get a hit, then it's going to disable that aircraft. Increase the speed of the helicopter anti-aircraft missiles lock on, uh, so that way if you get a jet that's coming right at you, you can lock onto them a little bit faster. Um, Guided rockets now only tar target ground targets. Reduce the direct damage done by attack helicopter gunners versus armor. So a lot of times the gunner can just plow down on tanks, you know, and uh, to disable them and destroy them. So uh, they have reduced that damage done. Um, I'm sure you can still, you know, destroy tanks and, and everything, but it's going to take a little bit longer. Increase the accuracy of the attack helicopter's rocket pods, both guided and unguided and slightly increase the damage of attack helicopter rocket pods versus infantry and other helicopters. Adjusted the F-35 center of mass so it's a little bit more stable, a little bit easier to handle hopefully. The F-35 also will now only hover at lower altitudes. They've increased the weapon systems to be consistent with other jets and they now have proper ejection seats on the F-35 and the Su-35 to uh, be able to jump out of the seat and remain alive. The MAV no longer destroys vehicles that run into it. Uh, it should be destroyed instead. Jet and helicopter collisions. No more jet jihad uh, running into helicopters because they can't shoot them down. Uh, so now jet and helicopter collisions results in the death of both vehicles. You can now spot with the EOD bot, and uh, also the EOD bot, I think I've got it highlighted somewhere else, but it, they have said that it's a lot easier to handle now. Reduce the damage of AA guns uh, to infantry. Uh, so a lot of people like to jump on in the Shire Canals and jump in the anti-air um, weapon and, and just mow down infantry. That's what happens on that map. Uh, so that's going to be a lot less effective. Stationary AA weapons now have air radar equipped by default. Uh, makes sense. Disabled vehicles now have increased reverse speed. So you're trying to get away from a, a bad situation. You're disabled. You can now increase back up a lot faster. Below radar now prevents the lock-on of Stinger and IGLA missiles. So more reasons to attach that to your jet. And added all horns to Jeeps. Beep, beep. Weapons, lots and lots of weapon changes. I'm not going to go through very many at all. A highlight on the two that are most talked about, the USAS, uh, they have reduced the rate of fire, uh, especially when you have frags attached. So I know that's a big deal with that weapon. Again, a lot of these changes, uh, they basically went through every gun and made some changes, some you know, help the recoil, some added a little bit more recoil, all that other stuff. Um, but so if you're really interested in a gun, you have your favorite gun, I would recommend going and checking that out to see what's changed. The FAMAS, uh, the FAMAS has a high rate of fire with extreme recoil. So they are uh, probably upping the recoil, I would imagine, making it a little bit more difficult to take out targets at long range. And they've also fixed the magazine round for that. Scopes, a uh, few changes to the scopes. Um, 
not going to really cover that either. Again, if you have your favorite scopes, you want to see if anything's changed on it, you can check that out. Bipod, uh, we talked about the bipod a little bit earlier. They've increased the accuracy uh, and the recoil is reduced when using the bipod significantly and improved for assault rifles and carbines. Um, let's see. Also increase the speed at which the bipod is deployed. So it says the speed has been increased 40 to 50 percent depending on the weapon and animation, which is a huge increase. So that's going to be, make more reasons to uh, use the bipod. Heavy barrel, the, uh, if you use the heavy barrel, vertical recoil has been reduced. Um, several weapons with low default bullet speed now have their bullet speed increased when using the heavy barrel and it lists out a few guns that that's uh, changed with. Aimed accuracy bonus provided by the heavy barrel also has increased. So uh, increases the effectiveness with small burst as originally intended. IRNV fixes, a few fixes if you use that. The foregrip uh, horizontal reduction sway has been changed. Um, so uh, it, it was a global percentage. Just if you put on a foregrip, it would do the same to all weapons. Now it's weapon specific. Uh, so it lists out a few weapons that have been changed, a few of them that have not. Small long range aimed accuracy penalty has been added to the foregrip. So um, mid to long range you may want to switch out your foregrip for something else laser sight if you use the laser sight you're going to get an added hip accuracy bonus uh, when using that uh, so the suppressor no longer reduces the maximum damage of a weapon when equipped so the suppressor now is uh it's going to make it where it mainly affects bullet drop and speed so it's still going to do the same amount of amount of damage but mid to longer range fights you're going to have to compensate for that lower um, round speed so that's going to be something to get used to I don't ever use a suppressor though but I may try it out I'm going to start trying out some more stuff I think because I it's just like in real life I get stuck on eating something and I like to eat the same meal like over and over I can live off hamburgers and pizza whatever Taco Bell I can live off of it I don't like to try a lot of new stuff but I need to start getting some more variety to my life Flash suppressor, the flash suppressor no longer reduces accuracy for automatic fire. Uh, it also works as a recoil compensator, so it's going to help reduce the recoil. So if you want to pl place the flash suppressor on, that's going to help with that. And uh, the bonus is larger than the bonus provided by the suppressor. Gadgets reduce the spot times on C4 and Claymore projectiles from 30 to 15 seconds. Tweaked the controls and physics of the EOD bot, so there we go, that's going to handle a lot better. Radio beacon, mortar, MAV, EOD bot, tug, SOFLAM should now be much easier to deploy. So, oh God, that kills me. I've been killed so many times trying to just lay down a radio beacon, and I'm like, rrr, rrr. and you walk up, and you just keep on walking up, and so hopefully that's, that's all things of the past. MAV will now be destroyed when running into a soldier or a vehicle at high speed. Uh, you can, you know, jihad your MAV into a soldier, but you're going to lose the MAV in the process. MAV now probably shows up in the kill feed um, and can no longer be used as an elevator. So uh, that is being done away with. Players no longer able to auto enter SOFLAM, MAV, and EOD bots once they are deployed. So you're going to deploy them then I guess you're going to have to actually, you know, press the button in order to jump into them. So, I mean, that's not a bad thing because sometimes as I'm deploying something, I see an enemy coming across or, or walking around the corner, you know, and then you're dead. And so, um, that's not a bad change. Players now use their knife to destroy enemy equipment, so you don't want to fire off and shoot, you know, an enemy's radio beacon because it may show you up on the map. Now you can just run up to it and knife it to destroy it. C4 no longer able to detonate after a player respawns. If the player is revived within 5 seconds, he can still detonate his C4. The player now may have a maximum number of mines, which is persistent after the player's death, uh, which will persist after the player's death. So, mines do stay down, but you can only deploy a maximum of 6 mines. Any number over that is going to remove a previous mine from the world. Claymores now live up to 5 seconds after a player dies. 
players can have a maximum of two claymores planted at the same time, which is the way it has been. Uh, claymores can now detonate from vehicles and uh, used to disable jeeps or kill the passengers in light jeeps. Uh, they do not do damage to heavy vehicles though. Ammo bags now stay until the user deploys them like med kits. Ammo bags resupply bullets more quickly, explosives more slowly, uh, especially the 40 millimeter grenades. Oh, Snuggles, come here. Come here. Oh. This is my parents' dog. She, got, she gets a little coughing fits every once in a while. She's okay. Why don't you calm her down? She's rotten. This is Snuggles. Keeping her, because uh, as I've talked about in the past with things with mom, uh, things have not been going good there lately. So I'm probably got not going to, again, be... Um, gone for a little bit um, so videos are probably going to slow back down again and, until we get things sorted out with her uh, again I appreciate everybody's kind words uh, about that um, back to the Battlefield 3 thing uh, where were we? Claymores ammo bags slightly reduce the effective blast radius of the RPG and grenades against infantry so that's interesting. Uh, reduce the total number of RPGs you can carry from 5 to 4. Uh, players desiring more rockets will want to use the explosive specialization. Uh, slightly increase the heal rate of the medical crate. The mortar can no longer be deployed in areas outside the combat zone. So a lot of players like to, uh, you know, feel like they've got it made because they can... Uh, sit outside where players can't run in to get them and they can fire off mortars no longer sir no no um, they've also fixed it to where wherever you are facing just like in vehicles if you're looking in a certain direction of a vehicle you exit you get out where you're looking uh, same thing now applies for the mortar mines and claymore c4 now only appear on the minimap when spotted by a teammate uh, team deathmatch. If you play that, a lot of changes um, fix the the spawn zones or, or spawning next to enemy players. Um, and on each map, uh, there's several maps listed out here where they've increased the um, the play area. They've also you know tweaked the spawn zones. So if you want to go through here, look at these maps: Carg Island, Tehran Highway. A couple to mention. Squad deathmatch again. Uh, several different changes to to those maps and the way they're laid out ps3 a lot of players have been talking about the input lag uh, now they have the ability to turn off anti-aliasing which reduces the input lag so apparently that's where that problem was coming from so ps3 players can now um, fix that area uh, improved Camaros rose for pc so a lot of players on the pc have been complaining about that you now have it improved whenever it releases on the PC. Uh, and then the minimap. Uh, there was a lot of improvements to the minimap. So it's supposed to give a, a clearer picture to you. So we'll have to see how that works when it comes out. And then as we started off the video, we started off with um, the server rental prices. Let me know what your favorite changes were to the Battlefield 3 patch. Uh, let me know what you thought of it. Um, did I get it right as far as picking out the most important things? Did I miss something? If I did, leave it in the comment section. I'm sure other people will thumbs up it. And uh, that way you can be sure that everybody's on the same page and knows exactly what's happening. So let me know if you think these prices on server rentals are good. And if you plan on doing some server rental services. Uh, again, I plan on having a... Uh, a server up for us and we're, we're definitely gonna have Wake Island 5 Flag Conquest on it I can tell you that and uh, we're gonna have all the big maps with uh, all the jets and other good armor stuff well that does it for this video guys please if you like this video if you found it informative be sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already share it with your friends like it comment all that other good stuff I will see you next time I am the Red Dragon thanks for watching